We often talk about trying times, harder times. Did you know there were some studies that came out last week that showed we don't realize how close we could be to a silent depression, another great depression. Here's a statement I wanna really bring to your attention though. I honestly believe this second or silent or next depression will be worse than the first one. Why do I say that? Well, we have more innovations now. We tend to have more money in the economy now. Why do we think it's gonna be worse than what the first one was? Well, let's talk about five reasons that I think that we will see a harder depression than we ever saw when it comes to the Great Depression. I believe the second will be a far worse than the first. Let's jump into those reasons today, and I think that will help us be wise in making decisions. So, you know what, we could do better in this area, this area, this area. And when we start doing better in those areas, I think we will be more prepared for a depression if it does come. Let's jump into it. Today's video starts right now. Close your eyes. Hey guys, welcome to the Max. Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, if you're new to the channel, go down here, press subscribe, ring the bell, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down, that's okay. But let us know what you think about this video. When you give us thumbs up and you comment, it helps us stay in the algorithm. It tells YouTube that this video could be important to other people. So please share the content with other people and that way it helps them be prepared just like we try to in this community. So let's jump into today's video about how we believe the second or the next depression could be worse than the first one. Here's the reasons, let's jump into it. Number one, people lack skills. That's a very broad statement. How many times have you been able to fix a simple water pipe? How many times have we been able to fix a simple car issue? How many times have you been able to change your tires? How many times have you been able to put something together? Like we put this, this little chicken mobile together not too long ago. How many times have you been able to do that? How many times have you been able to hunt, to fish, to work with simple tools. This is for men or women. Sadly, there should be a lot more men say, yes, I know I do all those things, but we don't. We've lost the simple uh, know-how to do skills. We live in a convenient world and there's nothing wrong with that, but when we lose sight of just the simplicity of understanding how to do something, to work with our hands, then we realize we may not be a Mr. Fix-It. We may not be a jack of all trades. Well, then we become more dependent on other individuals. So we suck at being independent. Now, I hate to say it like that, but the truth is, if we can't work with our hands, we can't do skills, then we can't take care of ourselves. So one thing the first depression really showed, the Great Depression, is that most families still lived in very rural, poor areas, but they knew how to do things with their hands. They knew how to work with tools. They knew how to fix things that need to be fixed. If the roof had issues, if the window had issues, if the wood had issues, if water needed to be a rerouted, we knew how to do those skills. Sadly, we've lost that, and I think that could be a very bad situation when it comes to people not knowing how to be independent and not knowing how to have skills. So what we can learn is, Number one, we need to hone in skills. We need to learn how to do skills. We need to learn how to fix things on our own and be a little bit more independent. Now, can you hire things out? Yes, there's nothing wrong with that. But you need to learn how to do those things just in case. Number two, people do not know how to grow food. They have lost that sufficiency. They have lost that sustainability. Now, we preach that on our channel. We just put out a video of fall growing in the Max Life. Go check that video out if you hadn't checked that out. But it's four easy things to grow on your farm. One of my biggest videos is four vegetables that we grow each and every year, all year long, in different seasons, depending on what it is. But go check those videos out. We have a playlist on gardening, because I want you to understand if we don't know how to grow our own food and to have that self-sufficient, self-sustaining way, then we're gonna be in a very vulnerable space. So in the first depression, a lot of people, as I said, lived on farms, lived in rural areas. They knew how to grow food. There was a garden in just about everyone's yard. There was a chicken coop just about in everyone's yard. If they didn't have a cow, they had a guy who had a cow who could milk. They, hunt, they understood how to make butter. We've lost how to grow the garden, grow food. So we need, to, we need to tighten that up. Even if you live in town, learn how to grow microgreens. Learn how to have patio gardens. Learn how to container grow. Those things I told you in that video, the Max Life, I shared it on my community tab. And it's, again, my wife and I are both in the video, the last one we posted on the Max Life. You need to go look at that and say, you know what, I can grow this. 
Learn how to be sustainable by growing a garden, no matter how big, how small. If it's five pots and five gallon buckets, or if it's 10,000 square foot, you have to learn how to grow food because that is going to be a major problem when it comes to another depression is people don't know how to provide their own food. Number three goes along with that. It's how to provide protein, how to provide meat, how to raise animals. Now I know everyone can't raise animals, but you see that barn behind me? It's raising 40 chickens are in it right now. There's 30 chickens right here beside it. And there's also 25 rabbits in there. That does not take a lot of space. You could do that in your garage. Yes, you would have to learn how to uh, aerate and ventilate and you would learn how to have a chicken house maybe behind or, or learn how to deep bed or to take the manure to feed the gardens like we talked about. But if we don't learn how to harvest our own protein, learn how to fish and hunt like we talked about a while ago, but not only that, learn how to butcher, how to break down the animal. We've got playlists of how to break down a pig, a sheep, chicken. You can do all that. You can process those. And I did it without any tools. I did it with a hand saw and also with knives, knowing the concept and knowing where to go with it, knowing how to utilize every aspect of that animal. We've lost that skill. So the first three are really more skills. We've lost how to fix things and be independent. We've lost sustainability when it comes to growing gardens. And we know we need protein, especially of course men, and especially when we're out working. And when we don't know how to raise the protein, harvest the protein, catch and trap the protein, that will become a major issue. Scarcity with food, scarcity with skills, scarcity with independence will be a lot worse. Because again, first depression, these things were pretty much easy for most individuals. They either knew how to or were part of a community that knew how to. We don't have that now. Number four is a monster one. It's people are addicted to medicine, pharmaceuticals. Now, I'm not saying it's a bad thing if you're taking a daily regimen. But if you're used to taking medicines and all of a sudden a depression takes place, all of a sudden hard times take place, can we get that medicine? Can we get those pharmaceuticals? Can we get the antidepressants? Can we get the anti-anxiety medicine? Can we get all that stuff? Can we get the life-sustaining uh, pharmaceuticals that we need? We don't know that. So therefore, if we don't know that, how can we prepare? And then also, have you ever seen anyone that's off their meds, quote, off their meds? If we see these shortages like we're already seeing, then we go into a depression style area like we did back in the early years with the first depression, the Great Depression. People can't handle it because we're not used to not living without the dependence of pharmaceuticals. I said this in another video, over 50% of advertising, I actually think it's three quarters around 75%, but let's just say over 50% I know on cable television is ads prompted towards pharmaceuticals. Why? Because we, they know we depend on them. Most doctors, instead of telling you to get healthy or learn the natural regimens of making your body better, they would rather just put you on these, these pharmaceuticals. Now, pharmaceuticals are good. I tell you all the time to buy from places like Jace Medical and have some emergency pharmaceuticals just in case, emergency antibiotics, things like that. But when we depend our life on uh, a, a, certain, a certain drug or a certain pharmaceutical to make us feel better, to almost crutch ourselves, again, not to hurt your feelings, do you realize if you depend on that and then all of a sudden something happens, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna be able to get off that? Are you gonna be able to be independent of that? No, you're gonna have a dependency issue which is gonna cause for more panic, more anxiety, and more issues. And that is gonna be catastrophic because that's a worldwide problem. That's an American problem especially. So people will go, uh, I don't wanna say crazy, but people will almost get into a place of fear and panic that uh, that's unheard of. They didn't have that in the first depression, the Great Depression. They didn't see any of that because they didn't have the pharmaceuticals like we do. We crutch our whole populace on pharmaceuticals. Sadly, it will cause major issues if we see another second depression, major issues. Now I say that saying this, if you're on life-sustaining pharmaceuticals or you want emergency pharmaceuticals for just in case emergencies like we have, please check with places like Jace Daily, Jace Medical. Those things are great to have. But if you're not, and these things are something like dependency issues, please learn to get off of them if you don't need them because you don't want that dependency to be on something that you always have to have and you may not have access to it always. And number five, last but not least, is people don't know how to defend themselves. They don't know how to simply defend what they have, protect their family. 
we are growing men up who don't know how to defend. We, we're growing men up who don't know how to uh, have a backbone and structure. I see this in our politicians. And even our military is showing weaknesses, not because they're weak men, but because of the policies that has now been pushed on them. We need to grow a stronger community, a stronger populace, stronger backbones. And when we have that mentality, then we then desire to learn how to defend. Then when we learn how to defend, we learn the skills. If it's self-defense, such as something like karate or some kind of fitness, that can protect with hands that's great you need to learn how to do that maybe jujitsu if it's not that then you need to learn how to utilize self-defense tools you need to learn how to practice with a, a firearm you need to learn how to utilize those you need to learn how to protect if it's simply buying a dog and training a dog to take care of your family so be it but what I'm saying is we don't know how to protect what we have we learn to just kowtow to everything uh, the video I made the other day about the lockdowns, I've had the most people say, well, it's mandates don't mean law. It's not legal. We don't have to bend down to it. Dude, have you remember the last few years? If people will give you just a little fear, such as, well, you won't have a paycheck. You can't work here anymore. And even though those mandates are not legal, they're still mandatory. They make all these people bow down because they're scared to death. So we have to grow backbones, we have to defend, we have to take care of ourselves, and we have to understand what protection means. That could be physically, that could be mentally, that could be psychologically. But I think it starts with a man, to me, honestly, it takes, we have to ground ourselves, first of all, spiritually, as a Christian, I believe that we need to be strong. However, we need to protect our family. When we become strong as men, we teach our boys to be strong. We teach our girls to be strong. We teach our wives to stand right beside us and be strong. It takes a family dynamic to say, you know what, we're going to be strong, we're going to defend, we're going to protect all that's ours, no matter if it's physically, mentally, spiritually, or psychologically. We don't know how to do that anymore. Family values were huge in the First Depression. You saw communities stand together. You saw people know what liberty and freedom was. They were willing to fight for it. They were willing to sacrifice for it. Sadly, I don't know if we're there anymore. Um, us as a populace, we're selfish. And we don't know anything anymore like we talked about in these other situations. If, if it comes down to it, are you ready to defend all that's yours? That's a big question. And I think uh, back in that time, we had stronger men. We had stronger families. We had stronger women. Uh, now I don't know if we're there. And I'm scared to see what would actually happen if something like this happens with uh, another depression. Now there is hope. Even if another depression is likely, if it's coming, and I honestly believe we're seeing signs of, of, of a lot of it now with the de-dollarization and the struggles that I, I think we're inflating our own economy uh, falsely, uh, especially with our government. If it comes, if you learn to say, okay, these five things, if we learn how to, do, how to have skills to do things, if we learn how to grow our own food, if we learn how to harvest our own protein and learn how to process our own protein and raise animals to take care of ourselves, if we learn how to protect, we learn to be dependent, we learn to live off holistic style medicines and try to stay off of pharmaceuticals and maybe have some emergency if we need it. If we learn to do those things, I promise you, we'll be able to go through any situation that the crazy world throws at us. America is on a very volatile path. If you haven't noticed, we're very polarized as a nation. We are indicting people, we're taking people to court, we're then trying to impeach this person and do this. All politics is sloppy, nasty, and to be honest with you, there's a bunch of people up there that's probably doing things illegal, sadly. So. Instead of being polarized and watching the media, maybe we should start worrying about our family, gaining wisdom, and doing these things and tightening these, these five up so that we will be more prepared for when things get a little tough. Guys, I hope this encourages you more than anything. If we're weak in these five areas, let's get strong in these five areas. That way, when we're strong in these five areas, it won't affect you as much. I talked to several uh, seasoned or older people in our areas, and they used to say, we're in the rural south of Mississippi. Remember, Mississippi is the most, uh, uh, you know, poverty-stricken uh, state in the nation. It's a, the poorest state. And again, I, I don't brag about that and I'm not making fun of it. I'm just being honest. But one thing I always heard from a lot of older individuals that I used to work with, they would say, you know, my parents never really understood the depression because they lived poor through it. They lived poor before it and they lived poor after it. We just lived through it. It was just life for us. What it did, it didn't affect them as much as what he was saying. 
We were used to living without. We were used to harvesting our own animals. We were used to growing our own gardens. We were used to having to work as a family. We were used to protecting what was ours because it was so valuable to us. So I challenge you, you won't feel the next depression like he was talking about if we would learn to hone in the skills and, talk, and cover these five issues closely. Guys, thank you for watching. Seek wisdom, gain wisdom, take care of your family, be good to your wife and kids, and be the man you're supposed to be, women be the women you're supposed to be, and that way we can raise a better generation that's stronger and understands kind of the volatility of America and how they can do better. Guys, thank you for watching. God bless. Happy Homestead Day.